goes back to the Romans, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It Same always wine, does. Every time we talk wine on this show, it goes back to the Romans. <laughs> and thank goodness busy. for them. They were very busy. Busy people. Uh, champagne, if, if you have never tried it, it's just one of those incredible experiences in life mm -hmm. steeped in a lot of history, as I mentioned, called the Devil's Wine, as a matter of fact. Here to tell us more about it from Groovy Grapes, wine consultant Rob Statham. Rob, welcome back to hey, the show. Hey, thank you. Great, great, to uh, great to have me back. So the Devil, why the Devil's Wine? Where does that come well, from? Well, champagne prior to the 19th century uh, where the British invented coal-fired glass, which is right. pretty much what we see here, which is very tough, very hardy bottle. What would happen before was, was in regular wine bottles. And the problem with that was uh, champagne, uh, once it began its fermentation, would be cellared in the winter okay. in cool cellars. And champagne is at almost the northernmost region you can possibly get for wine production. Mm -hmm. So what would happen is a winter frost would kick in and would stop the yeast from converting the sugar into alcohol. So it'd stay dormant, and then the warmth of spring would come along. The yeast would uh, react with the sugar again, but uh, to create the alcohol or to, to re-ferment. But the problem with it was CO2 gas, and that's a byproduct of uh, the fermentation process. Right. And now normally you'd have it in huge stainless steel tanks or big oak vats. Mm -hmm. The problem is you got it in a small area of a bottle. And uh, you go up to about six atmospheres under pressure and it would explode. Right. <laughs> Boom, and boom, what boom, would boom, yeah? Boom. And what yeah. would happen is start you a chain reaction. So one would break, and you could have up to ninety percent of the cellar lost at any time. Wow. Always frustra it frustrated the French for hundreds of years, and the um, cellar hands had to wear iron masks and heavy clothes to protect themselves, like shrapnel flying at them. And people <laughs> no. got killed. So um, that plus the sparkling nature of the wine, which the French abhorred. In fact, uh, Dom Perignon fought for his whole lifetime. Uh, from the time he started working with champagne or wine and champagne from around 1660 to his death in 1715 from the Abbey of Hauteville. Um, it caused the French to dub it the devil's wine. <laughs> I due love to it. its explosive, dangerous, and mysterious <laughs> nature. A terrible champagne incident. Yes, yes. back Tragic. in 1582 or something. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it has to be made in that region to be called champagne. Correct. There's sparkling wines made all over the world, Correct. but mm -hmm. champagne is from that region yes. specifically. And the, and the laws, uh, it started up with the Committee of Inter Interpersonnel de Vin de Champagne, which governs champagne law. And mm -hmm. it's all under one appellation, which makes champagne really unique because right. it's not subset into villages or specific regions and sites as is the rest of France. Right. Um, with that in mind, there was a lot of pressure with the European Union, especially when it became into being in 1992, to force laws throughout the rest of the New World not to dub it champagne. Right. Because they used to have it method champenois, right. and it's okay. now the traditional method. Right. And that's okay. how it's dubbed. And the only re the way it can be champagne is you're correct. It has to come from the Champagne region, which is one of the five vineyards around uh, Rhyme or Epernay, right. which is about okay. 90 miles uh, east of Paris. Should and we try some champagne? Yes. Sure. So there's only 300 champagne houses. Is that Yeah, right? and the, there's a huge amount of growers. There's uh, 19,000 growers in the region that supply <laughs> 300 <laughs> champagne houses. Of course, some of the most popular are like... Uh, Pierre Jouet, who had the eldest, the oldest drinkable champagne cracked in 2009 from 1825. Wow. You have, uh, that one yeah, didn't explode. Yeah, you have <laughs> Moet and Chandon, of course, yes. uh, with their high end uh, Dom Perignon, and Vauve Clicquot. And in fact, Vauve Clicquot, uh, as a champagne house, uh, Mad Madame Vauve Clicquot was mm -hmm. uh, a big innovator in champagne. Uh, really? Champagne really took off around the 19th century, you know. Uh, from just to skip through the history because we could spend hours talking yeah. about this. Well, but didn't you do 17 minutes? Oh, uh, yeah, this 17 <laughs> minute dry shoot alone, and I <laughs> felt I could talk forever. But uh, <laughs> it went from the 5th century of the Romans, if you shoot all the way through to the Benedictine monks, uh, the 9th, uh, 9th, 10th century, 987, it became the toast of coronation to kings with uh, Hugh Capet being crowned, and that started the tradition of it. Um, of course, the British had a huge influence in it. Uh, they're the ones that discovered sparkling in 1662. It was not, or 1666, uh, Charles uh, Merritt. It uh, was a, a scientist. It wasn't Dom Perignon as suspected. All, right. He was the one who created it into white wine. It used to be a pale pinkish wine. Because they're black grapes. That's what like I was thinking. Two-thirds of, right? <coughs> Two of it. Right. This right. wine, in fact, is like, yes, this wine is like 80% black grapes. But it's, um, they don't, when they press it, they press it gently with four ton batches. And yeah. then these uh, shallow wooden presses so that they minimize that there's no skin contact or stems okay. or whatnot. And um, that's how they produce it. And Are fact, there different flavor profiles to different Champagne? There is. You uh, have typical uh, champagne, which is the blend of all three grapes, Pinot Noir, Moon, Pinot Meunier, and Chardonnay. Okay. okay. And then uh, you have Blanc en Blanc, which is white champagne, uh, mm -hmm. which is all Chardonnay. And then you have, uh, Blanc, uh, then you have um, Blanc en Noir, 
which is all red champagne. It's oh. uh, Pinot Noir, Pinot Meunier. And then you have Rosé, which is... Like a pink champagne. Yeah, yes. which is the only uh, wine allowed in the European Union to be a blend of white and red wine. Really? Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> now, the, so first time, the first time I ever tasted champagne, really good champagne... Yeah. And this one was is... ...was in is Australia, and, cool. it, and it tasted like buttered crumpets. And I noticed in your notes that it has a bready yeasty and I was like yes, yes that's, that's the butter that's yes. one. I told you my first time was cheers. just two years ago trying yes. champagne to daytime cheers to daytime yes. auto and I had had a sparkling before I had a, a mm. champagne I had a Veuve Clicquot and the difference mm. my wife and I looked at each other and went oh my what? god so this is the big deal about champagne yeah. because everyone obviously it's I very think assumes right? it pairs well with a wide yeah. range of food and assumes that mm. sparkling wine is, is very much the same, but obviously it, it no. isn't. No, right? and we're familiar mostly with the dry style, thanks to the British. They're the ones who drove it in the 19th century. Okay. The British Empire dominated the world and loved the dry style, whereas uh, Russians love very sweet champagne. Okay. And okay. still very sweet, luscious champagne in so production. So is that more of a dessert? Label do, which would be dessert. Right, Absolutely. okay, interesting. Um, hmm. But uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, very deep-rooted in history. Why, why do you serve it in a glass like this? Because of the way the bubbles move up through the flute. Okay. It's a very long, narrow glass, as you can see, which captures the magnificence and the beauty of champagne. Now, I, my little bit of champagne history that I know, and I don't know, uh, you're, you can correct me, I had heard that the original champagne glass was based on Marie Antoinette's breasts, on the shape. I so did the not first know that. I even learned something Because it's the bowl. That is but who knows? The you very had to go that, <coughs> that route, didn't you? The very, very first time that I ever had saw a champagne was given to me in this, and I'm like, wow, you, someone wanted to celebrate that? That's kind of <laughs> weird. I don't think it's but, weird. And but the sparkles, without getting myself yes, and the sparkles thanks to... But uh, it's the bowl. It's true. Right. Yeah. And the sparkles, thanks to uh, Madame Clicquot of uh, House Vauve Clicquot, was the second fermentation with okay. the liquor de tirage, which was added yeast and sugar, mm -hmm. and it would sit, and it would ferment, and uh, it would, they would also riddle it, so it would ferment for another eight weeks, and what they do is they have this riddling, so they take the bottle into a vertical position. Mm. And then what would happen is they would dip the tip of it, which was a plastic insert and a crown cap, into a, fr a cold brine. Like it was minus whatever, it was very cold brine, which right. would okay. freeze it, and then they disgorge it. And that was actually her invention to champagne, which yeah. is a huge step Clever lady. in the whole process of champagne make, uh, wine making. And Your knowledge of wine and champagne, it, it always and just blows us away, Rob. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, thank you so much. This You're is welcome. a great education. Amazing. A great time, too, to get in touch with Groovy Grapes. Yes, springtime. You, yeah, springtime fun, fun. The weather's improving. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Great time to network. Nobody really wants to go out too much in the winter, especially no. in Ottawa, big yeah. hibernating city. Um, terraces open up as well, That's so right. if you need event planning, we're, we're really happy to, happy to have an event outside for Can you people. imagine having this guy at your event describing yes. every wine that you're enjoying? It'd be an incredible <laughs> experience, Rob. Thank you so Cheers. much for Thank joining us. Really much. appreciate it. Cheers to you. We'll be right back yes. with more daytime right after this.